Well, here's Fannie and Freddie to buy them, but where are they going to get the money? Well, Fannie and Freddie go out and borrow the money, you see? They, but notice they can borrow more cheaply than anybody except the U.S. government. Why? Because you don't have to worry that they won't be able to pay you back. Why not? Because they're government-sponsored enterprises, and everybody knows that the government will back them up if they can't pay off their creditors. So they can borrow more cheaply, and because they can borrow more cheaply, they can outcompete other people. So now what happens, you see, is when they start popping these interest rates down in, in the early part of this decade, what happens is that the savings and loans, the banks have all this money to lend. They don't want to lend to these subprime people, but wait, the government's pushing, putting pressure on them to subprime, to, to lend to the subprime, but, but guess what? Hey, go ahead and lend to these subprime people and do what? You lend to them, you get fees for originating the loan, the loan's very risky, you package a bunch of these risky loans and you turn around and sell it to Fannie or Freddie. Now you don't have to worry if they don't pay. Because you they don't owe you the money anymore. You've already gotten the money. Fannie and Freddie now own the IOUs. You see? Well, under those circumstances, why not make those loans? It makes sense to make those loans. So they did, and they didn't make them in fives and tens. They made them in thousands and tens and thousands and hundreds of thousands. And when it's all through, it may even turn out to be millions uh, of loans like that. Now, these loans were a little strange, okay, uh, to the subprime people. And, and some of them were prime loans were like that, too. But... Uh, there was so much nonsense going on here, it's, um, it's uh, necessary for me to, uh, to look in here somewhere and see. I, I wrote something down so I wouldn't, but you know, I, I wouldn't be able to find it when I was looking for it, right? So, ah, there it is. So, so what kind of loans did they make, these subprime loans and all? Well, one was a no-document loan. But the no document. You come into a mortgage agency, the SNL, you say, I want to make a loan, and they say, okay, how much money do you make and all that? And you tell them, and, and, and they, they don't ask for any documentations, no proof or anything. They just take your word for it, okay? No doc loans. Well, you can imagine that many no doc loans turned out to be liar loans, right? What's a liar loan? A liar loan is where the borrower lies about his income, right? Or his wealth or whatever. Just, oh, yeah, you know, I'm, I want to buy that house. And they say, well, what's your income? Well, I want to borrow $400,000. What's your income? 30000 a year. 30000 a year? You can't afford that. 40000 a year? <laughs> yeah, 50? 150? 150. I hear you, and I'll, you know, try 160 and you got the loan, okay? And so people lied about it. Notice collusion on both sides, okay? One guy lying about it, but the other guy knew he was lying. He could, why, why would he care? Why, why would he care? You lie, I'll lend you the money, you give me the IOU. The bigger the IOU that you give me, the more money you borrow, the more commission I make, and oh, if it, before it goes bad, right away, I sell it to Fannie and Freddie. If it goes bad, Fannie and Freddie get stuck with it. Holy mackerel. No doc loans. Liar loans, uh, ninja, ninja loans. I like a ninja. What's a ninja? No income, no job, no assets, right? Uh, but you got your loan. Um, negative am, negam loans. What's a negam loan? A negam loan is one where you borrow money, and you know how that is with a house. Uh, every month you have to pay interest and a little bit of principal. Well, suppose you can't pay all the, all, all the interest. Okay, one month. Well, if you can't pay all the interest... They take the amount of interest, let's say the interest this month was $1,000, but all you could pay is 900 They say, that's okay. And they take the other 100 and they say, we'll lend you that 100 How do they lend it to you? By adding it to the principal value of your loan. So every month that you're in, you know, underwater in terms of the interest, what happens? You owe more and more principal. The principal keeps going up. That's a negative loan. You had people doing that kind of thing. Um, 
what else? Let's see. Uh, oh, and then, and then, of course, no money down loans. I mean, obviously, that went into it, uh, a lot of those. But the other thing they would do is say, well, okay, you need to borrow $200,000. We'll lend you that. But look, the house is, you got to put 10% 10, 10 down. It's $220,000 house. Uh, well, you got to put uh, 20000 down. And, and you say, but I don't have 20000 down. They say, okay, well, we'll lend you that money too, a piggyback loan. So they not only lend you the money to buy the house, but they lend you the money to put the down payment on the house. Well, then, let's face it, you don't have a penny in the house, right? I mean, all you're doing is renting the house. You don't have any money invested in that house. Sad, sad stuff that was going on. But even then, to get these people to get into these big, big loans that they couldn't afford, what did you have to do? Well, sometimes you had to tell them, look, you can afford $1,000 a month. And the guy's looking and he's saying, $1,000 a month. By the skin of my teeth, I can afford $1,000 a month. Well, we can afford $1,000 a month if we only eat oatmeal, you know, five days, you know, morning, noon, and night for five days a week, you know, and the other two days a week we can eat pasta, you know. But, but we can get in that big house with 1000 a month, right? And they say, yeah, but now, you, now remember, that loan's, that 1000 a month, that interest rate's only good for two years. Say, only good for two years? Yeah, but you know what's been going on with housing. What's happening to the prices? They keep going up and up and up, you see? So in two years, when it's time to reset the interest rate on your loan, the house is going to be worth more, right? And so you can do what? You can just sell the house for its increased value and take out the difference between its increased value and what you paid for it. You're sitting on a nice little pile, and you can just keep doing that again. You can keep flipping houses. And of course, Greed enters the picture, right? And some of these people say, yeah, man, I can't afford that house, but that's a nice house, and I could live in it, and even if I have to get out in two years, I lived in a nice house for rent, and I got a profit on it. And the other thing they told them was, and besides, maybe the interest rates will go down. And if interest rates go down, then you won't have to pay a 1000 a month. You can stay in the house, and the interest rates go down. Oh, that sounds good, right? And then what happens? Interest rates are so low, and they pump in money out so much. Well, let's see what happens when you pump all that money out. Let's, let's get Mr. Bernanke to tell us, OK? Is this the one? Huh, Mr. Bernanke. You know, everybody knows who Bernanke is, right? Big, big guy at the Fed. Now, this guy's a super genius, I want to tell you, OK? I mean, this guy was chairman of the economics department at Princeton. Okay, got a PhD from MIT in economics, chairman of the department at Princeton, vice chairman of the Fed when he made these remarks. Then he became, I think, chief or head of the President's Council of Economic Advisors, and then back to the Fed as chairman. So, you, you know, you talk about gold plated credentials, huh? Look up there in that second paragraph. Like gold, US dollars have only, have value only to the extent that they are strictly limited in supply. Ben Bernanke, six years ago, November 2002. Two weeks ago, 10 days ago, when it says the Federal Reserve announced, believe me, the Federal Reserve doesn't announce anything that the, the, the chairman of the Fed doesn't agree with. Two weeks ago, the Federal Reserve announced Monday it will offer, what? An unlimited amount of dollars to three other central banks. I thought you just told us money has value only to the extent that the supply is strictly limited. And now you say you're going to make an unlimited amount available? I mean, uh, unless you have no concept at all of reality, you know that if you increase the supply of something, its value goes down relative to what it would otherwise be. Why would money be any different? It's not. So they, they've been increasing the supply of money, and, and that's what happens, you see. So at any rate, to go back to the interest rates, if I can find them, hmm, I'm not real good at this kind of stuff, as y'all imagine. So they've kept the interest rates down so long, it starts to call, but how do they keep it down? By pumping money into the economy, lending it into existence. 